I need you to get on your feet. It's about to go down. Come on, get on your feet. Here we go, y'all. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do. Cause I need you more and more. Come on. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do. Cause I need you, Lord, more and more. Come on, sing it. Good morning. Welcome to the City of Light broadcast. We're so delighted that you joined in with us once again this morning. You know, we want to declare over your life that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I tell you, First Lady, sometimes you go through different trials and sometimes you get to a point where you just want to say, I had it. That's enough. I can't take any more. And, and, and you get to a place where you really say, you know, what else can I take? I've given, I've given, I've given. I've come to a point, I've come to a place where I've just expended all of my energy, all of my resources, and just want to throw in the towel. Well, this morning, we're talking to those of you who feel like you're in that position, that look like you're in that predicament. We've come to tell you it's not over till God says it's over. And we believe that this morning's word is going to allow you to help you. It's going to inspire you and motivate you to recognize that God, who is the God of enough, who's the God of more than enough, is able to give you, is able to provide in your life what you stand in need of so that the situation that seems like it's collapsing around you will not take you out. You know the Bible declares that we are more than conquerors. Oh, yeah. And so then we pray this morning that if you would stay tuned to this word and allow this word to saturate your life and to get all off in your spirit, we believe that you will find an inner strength to rise up from what appears to be the ashes, what appears to be your, your, your funeral. You'll be able to rise up and begin to declare, it's not over till God says it's over. I shall live and not die, but declare the works of the Lord. Stay tuned for this morning's message, which comes from our series entitled Enough. You have to recognize that he's saying that I've created you with versatility. Who God help me in this place. Uh, uh, Patrick, there, there are some athletes that, that are one dimensional. They can only play either offense or defense to rail. But, but then there are some people uh, whom God gives them multi-talents. Uh, and so then they are able to play on both sides of the ball. Uh, and so then what he's done is he's giving them uh, multiple assignments. Watch this, Salem. I'm talking to us. Uh, that he gives you more than one assignment uh, because he's created you with the gifting to be able to play more than one position. And so then he said, not only has God made me like a sword, but he's also made me like an arrow. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so then he says, make no mistake that when he made me like an arrow, uh, he's put something in my mouth. Oh, God, help me in this place. Uh, he said he's giving my mouth and made my mouth like a sword. Uh, are y'all hear me in this place? But, but not only that, he says that as a sword, it's because I have something in my mouth. Uh, and when I open the word that comes out of my mouth, it's like a two-edged sword. Uh, it's going to cut going in but it's going to also cut coming out uh, are y'all hearing what I'm saying so he says he's not only made me like this sword but he's also made me as an arrow uh, he's made me as a polished shaft in which I have the abilities now watch this uh, he says that I've made you like this polished shaft uh, I've oiled you uh, because the reason why I've oiled you is so that when I shoot you, uh, you have the abilities to pierce deep. Whoop. God help me in this place. Uh, I'm gonna say that one more time, Shaw. He said, He says, I made you like this polished shaft, uh, and I've welled all you. In other words, I've seasoned you uh, so that when I shoot you, uh, you have the abilities to pierce deep. 
deep. Now make no mistake, one might ask Jamie, well I thought the sword could pierce deep. What's the difference in the sword piercing and the arrow piercing? Well the purpose of the arrow and the purpose of the sword are different. The purpose of the sword is that I have to pierce you when you're in close proximity. Oh, God, help me in this place. Huh? Uh, in other words, Sister Ida, the sword huh, lets me release a word right now. Huh? But when I need you and release a word for in your future, huh, then I have to shoot this arrow huh, because the arrow is going to travel distance. Huh? It's going to travel into your future. Huh? And so then there's a time, watch this, Salem, huh, when God is going to release a word for right now. Huh? When the, we're in close proximity of what God has for us to do but then sister Bobby there's going to come a time that there's going to be a word in my mouth that God is going to cause me to release that won't be for right now that won't be for 2014 but Mario it's going to be for 2015 but make no mistake when it shoots when it's released it's not just going to go into January but it's going to go through February. It's not just going to stop in March, but it's going to go through May. It's going to go through June. It's not just going to stop when it gets hot, but it's going to show up in the fall time. It's not going to stop because the weather changes, but it's going to go all the way to the end of where it was sent. Oh yes, yes, yes. God has put a word he's given us that versatility he he's given us that that a capability jamie that we can do more than that well some people can't walk and chew gum y'all don't hear what i'm saying they, they mess up they have to do one or the other but there are some people that that god intrinsically deposits something more than what he gives to others Even Paul says that. In Corinthians, when he talks about the diversity of the gifts. Now all of us are created with the same thing. We are created equal in our makeup. But there's a difference in our purpose. So then he says that, uh, make no mistake that I've created you. And I made you like a sword mm -hmm, in my hand. And I made you like an arrow, a polished shaft in my quiver. Now watch this, saints of God. His hand protects the sword. That's why he said the sword is hid in the hand. The arrows are hid in his quiver. Watch this now. The, the sword or the hand is protected by God himself. The quiver is the God's purpose for your life. And so then you're protected, watch this, by God's purpose over your life. And so that when God shoots you, when God releases you to carry out your assignment, he's already put a protection around you that the enemy can't stop you. When God releases you to go forward, he's already protected you that even when he sends you a purpose that seems to be afar off, He's already tied to it. He's already assigned to it your protection. So then you don't have to be afraid to go. Because there's a time that when we're right in God's vicinity and he's holding us with his hand. And so then he doesn't release us. But then when he says, now you've reached a stage of maturity, I now can step back and release you. And I don't have to hold your hand. Because now when I send you forth, it's something in you. Because watch this. Make no mistake. When he says that the polished shout, he says that you've been well. Old. 
Y'all missed that one right there. He says that, oh God, help me in this place, that, that you are now well all. Uh, Y'all still didn't catch it because you say, what are you talking about? Uh, he's saying that I've now anointed you uh, with some oil uh, so that now when I release you, uh, you got some power. Y'all don't hear me in this place. Uh, you got some power that where other folk would fail, uh, you going to pierce through that thing. Uh, where other folks will stop uh, because you got the breakers anointing, uh, you going to break through that thing. Uh, where other people will get dismayed and discouraged but because you've been old you're going to go through some stuff tell your neighbor more than that more than that more than that and so he says let no make it be known that God mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he has made me like a sword but he's also made me like a polished shaft and so then, watch this, verse 3, he goes on to say, And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Listen what he declares. He says, Through your life, through the giftings and the abilities that I've given you, I will be glorified. He wasn't saying maybe, he wasn't saying, I'm hoping on it. He's not saying, I'm, I'm, I'm running the risk that just in case. No, no, no. He's saying, I know because how I made you, I'm going to receive some glory. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying in this place? And so then in verse 4, he says, then I said, now watch this. This is a conversation. This is a conversation, Jamie. God has done all this to say, look, I done called you, I done made you, called you from your mother's womb and called you by name. I done made you like a sword. I made you like a polished shaft. Even tell you, I will be glorified, which means you're going to fulfill your destiny. That's what it means. When he says, I will be glorified, that means you're going to reach the end of your destiny. But then listen what the writer says. That's why he says, then I said after hearing all of what God said, he says, well, look, Lord, I've labored mm, in vain. I've spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. So he's asking the question, God, how can you receive glory when it seems like my labor appears to be in vain. Mm, my God. How, how God can, can you receive glory when it seems like I'm not being effective? How God can you receive glory when it looks like my efforts to live right seem to be pointless and futile? How? How, God, can, can, can you receive glory when it seems like I'm, I'm buffeted with so much resistance? How, how God, how, God, I'm, it, 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 it fathoms me, God, how you're going to receive this glory because when I look at myself uh, and the things that I'm having to cope with and to deal with, uh, I don't see how you can receive glory from me because all of my efforts and attentions uh, are focused on trying to get out of the hole that I'm in and so oh y'all not hearing what I'm saying and so how can I deal or watch this how can I focus on ministry when my life is in turmoil oh God help me in this place how, how, how can I focus on producing a, a CD Jamie and, and I got all these issues in my life how, how can I go and minister to the nations when my bank account is funny how, how, how God can I go and be a servant when I got these issues in my body and I'm so glad he says God how can you receive this glory when it seems like my life may have been unsuccessful my efforts have been unsuccessful when it seems like my family misunderstands me on this hand and church folk do me wrong on that hand and, and I go to work and I'm dealing with issues and I 
just feel like the world is just crashing down on me, God. And so how can you receive glory when I can't see the break of day, God? How, how can you receive glory, God, when, when my children keep coming to me from issues and problems after problem? I go to the school, get this one out of trouble, then I got to go to the jail to get that one out of trouble. God, how can you receive any glory when it seems like my prayers are only focused on my trials that I don't get a chance to even talk to you Shelly about what you want to do with my life how God can you receive glory God when my mama is sick at home how God can I receive glory when I got issues on my job God, God how can you receive glory when my child is acting wayward God, God how can you receive glory when me and my husband not get it alone God how can how can you receive any glory when, when all I think about day and night is uh, where is he at uh, who he on the phone with uh, who she texting her uh, how God can you receive glory when it seems like the one closest to me misunderstands me how can you receive glory God uh, when I look in the mirror uh, and it looks like I don't have what it takes uh, how can you receive glory I know you call me uh, from my mother's womb uh, but when I look at myself uh, all I see uh, is deficiencies uh, all I see uh, is inadequacies uh, all I see uh, is neglect uh, all I see uh, is rejection uh, all I see uh, is negativity and so how God can you receive glory How can you receive glory, God, when it seems like everything I'm doing is not producing any fruit? And not only is it not producing any fruit, God, but it's zapping my strength. Oh, God. It's not only that, that it seems like it's not producing, but God, I'm being wore out. Oh, God. Oh, help me in this place. My strength is dissipating. My, my strength is diminishing. My, my strength is decreasing. And so what used to then bother me now gets on my nerves. The stuff I used to be able to ignore now seems like it's louder. Oh, God, help me in this place. And so then he says, my strength. God is now beginning to diminish. It's beginning to diminish. And then he says, yet, yet God, yet God, yet surely God. He's saying, yet what's due me is you, God. What you going to give me? That my reward is going to come from you. But when I look at all my faithfulness, all my giving, all my sacrificing, all my praying, all my fasting, all my enduring, it looks like it's for nothing. Mm, mm, mm. Seems like the harder I try, the worse it gets. The more I pray, the more pain shows up in my life. And so God, he says, how can you get this glory when it seems like I'm not productive? And he responds by saying this in verse 5, and now. Hmm. So we skip over those two words. Mm -mm, but you got to stop right there. He says, and now. Mm -hmm. Now that you said what you said. Now that you've had your little pity party. Uh-huh. Now that because watch this, it's evident Shonda that he was saying these things to try to convince God that he could not receive glory from his life. Otherwise, he never would have told him those things if he didn't believe that he could still give God glory based upon what he had expended. But what God says, now that you finished feeling sorry for yourself. 
Because watch this. Sometimes we state the facts, but not the truth. I want you to get that. There's a difference in facts and truth. Facts and purpose don't always line up. But truth and purpose will always line up. I want y'all to hear that right there. Facts. When I say facts, we're talking about circumstances. We're talking about conditions. They don't always line up with your purpose. In fact, a lot of times they seem to cancel out your purpose. Because when you look at them, the facts seem to make you come up with the conclusion that you're not qualified, nor do you have the prerequisites to be what your purpose says you ought to be. Oh, God, let me come home to you. The fact of the matter is we're a small church. Look around. The fact of the matter, we're out here in God's country. That's the facts. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so then you take those facts and you look at that vision statement and you say, wait a minute. How can this small company make the world a brighter place when some of us had been out of this world oh uh, y'all missed that one right there huh? how, how, how can we make the world a brighter place when the fact of the matter is is that we are small the, the fact of the matter is we don't have a whole lot the fact of the matter y'all don't hear what I'm saying in this place uh, uh, we're not the biggest we're not the brightest we're not the best and so then the facts don't look like it goes with the purpose but then when you go to truth help me in this place well what does truth say truth is what the word of God says and the word of God always goes with purpose y'all not hearing what I'm saying well what does the word of God say because we know that the word of God is true well the word of God says that whom I've called I've predestined whom I foreknew I've destined whom I've justified I'm predestined you say wait a minute you got that all out of order no 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 the truth of the matter is that all of those things come about because God already looked into the future and already set our end at the beginning and so the truth of the matter when God told us Salem that I want you to make the world a brighter place the truth of it is is that God had already predestined us God had already selected us God had already handpicked us are y'all hearing what I'm saying and so no matter what the fact say the truth is that God is going to put a word in us that God is going to shoot us like an arrow and we'll be able to minister to folk not only here in Heidelberg not only here in Paulden but we're going to minister to some folk in Fort Worth, Texas we're going to minister to some folk in Hattiesburg we're going to minister to some folk in law we're going to minister to some folk at the firehouse. Oh, y'all don't hear what. And so then you can't always go by the facts. And some of us allow people to use facts to talk us out of our purpose. Because we say, I don't have nothing to go against them, Shay, when they start rattling off those facts. How can I dispute when they say we small and I say, well, we, we, we. We are small. How, how can I dispute when they say we out here in the country? Well, uh, this is the county. So we, we, we get tongue tied because we try to use facts on facts. But how you refute them is that you come back with truth. How you get rid of them is you come back with the word. That when the word says, no matter what it looks like, don't let small beginnings cause you to get worried because my ladder shall be greater my end shall be greater than my beginning that the glory of the ladder house shall be greater shall be greater shall be more than that of the former house slap your neighbor say neighbor we're about to be more than 
the former house, we're about to be greater than, we're about to be bigger than, we're about to be more than, because God said it. Oh my God, because God said it. My goodness, I declare in the name of Jesus. Woo, what a word, I tell you. We pray this morning that you are ready to get up, that you're ready to turn over a new leaf in your life, that you are tired of being sick and tired, that you've come to a point in your life where you are tired of just screaming, I've had it and that's enough, but you come to a fork in the road and you're ready to make some decisions about your future. You cannot go back and change anything that has happened in your past, but this morning can be a new beginning for you because God understands that what you've gone through in his eyesight is a light thing. And God knows that he has put more in you, that he's put something in you that will allow you to handle more than that. Just when we believe that we're at our wit's end, that's when the power of God begins to rise up in us. That's why the word emphatically declares that greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. That means I have a power on the inside of me that's indestructible, that's unsurmountable, that cannot be defeated by my trials, by my adversaries, or by any enemy that I'm confronted with because this power is not of me, but it is of God. And so then we pray this morning that you understand that you have enough within you and with God because the Bible says if God be for us who can be against us that you will be able to overcome that you'll be able to outlast that you'll be able to survive you, any dilemma in any situation that you have been facing oh my goodness my Lord. let the word work in your life yeah. and you will see the results that the word declares that you ought to have well, my brother, my sister, we're out of time. And before we go, we just want to say a quick prayer for you because we are always, as Paul said, we cease not to make mention of you in our prayers. If you would, just bow your heads for a moment. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, you know the hearers of your word. And Father, right now, God, they have made a conscious decision to let go of what has held them hostage. But they need your strength, God. They need your power, God, to rise up in them and help them overcome what has seemed to held them captive. Father, in the name of Jesus, show yourself to be the God of more than enough, that they'll recognize that through you and in you, that they'll be able to overcome any situation. Father, we thank you for the glory that's going to be revealed. For your word says that nothing can compare to the present sufferings that we're enduring because the glory that's going to be revealed is going to be greater than what I'm going through right now. Father, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Well, we're out of time, but not out of word. And we want you to know, as always, that we're here for one reason, and that is to, to make, make the world, world a, brighter a brighter place. God bless you. And we love you and see you all next week.